So we are here at the Qualcomm booth at the Mobile World Congress 2019. You've already seen a video generally talking about 5G, the, the interview I did with Ignacio. Now I'm talking with Danny and we are going to talk about the future of 5G. So first of all, Danny, I want to congratulate you and Qualcomm on uh, getting 5G in 2019. That's so fast because uh, it's been a buzzword. I talked with Ignacio as well on this. He said it was a buzzword, but now it's a reality. reality. You know, that's yeah, that's absolutely. crazy. That's crazy. You know, you got all the partners together yesterday mm -hmm. um, and that, there was a big celebration. Yes. So congratulations for that. Uh, so let's begin with the 2019 yeah. the near term sure. what's going to happen yeah I mean we're super excited about 5g um, tons of stuff happening on the floor here um, and my team so I mean technical marketing uh, we've been talking about 5g since 2015 time frame so uh, it's really great to see 5g becoming a reality seeing in phones in different CPEs uh, different type of devices um, but you know this is by no means that 5g stops here it will continue to evolve and we're gonna see tons of new use cases for 5g um, so in the, in the short term, we are going to see 5G deployments um, starting first half of 2019 based on NSA, so non-standalone version of uh, release 15. Okay. Um, and we will see the SA with the standalone version with the 5G core coming in the second half of this year. And we've announced product that will support um, the, the SA mode for, for release 15. So what's this uh, non-standalone and standalone? Can sure. you differentiate between that? Sure, so we actually accelerated uh, 5G standardization um, to make 2019 possible. And to do that, we actually, we actually prioritized the non-standalone, which means that you are using the LTE uh, core, the EPC, connected to the new 5G NR radio. Okay. With NR, uh, with standalone, it's using the whole stack, so you have the 5G core, 5G Genobi and the 5G UE, so it's it's a it's an end-to-end -end 5G. It's what we, what's the uh, the okay. standalone? Okay. Yes. So the non-standalone right now is a mishmash of old and new technology, and the standalone is going to be entirely new. Is right. that right? Yeah. So 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 the non-standalone will have the new radio, um, but the core network is still LTE. So you are you still have an LTE anchor. Uh, the, the the standalone will have 5G end-to-end. Uh, -end. Yes. And when's that coming? Second half of this year, so sooner than than uh, you know, still that's still before 2020. Exactly, that's still yes. before 2020. Yes. Uh, so this new radio, you said full stack. So what are all the things in the stack? Can you explain that? So you know, just generally speaking, it's the core network, yeah. the you know the Genobi, the base stations, and then the UE, the handsets. So that's kind of the the end. We we do have a demo on that as well. Just the end to end um, uh, network, yeah. And uh, does it have uh, the millimeter wave modules and oh, yeah. it works with that as well? Yes. Can you uh, so both touch? Stand -alone, both standalone and non standalone support millimeter wave and sub six. So, okay. yeah. So, when, uh, so millimeter wave is the next uh, short term goal, if I'm not wrong. So right? Today we are seeing millimeter wave getting deployed um, starting the first half of 2019. Um, what we are seeing is ma many operators will fo first focus on outdoor networks, so bringing millimeter wave to your smartphones. What we're seeing in the, in the short term, uh, in the next year or so, is that we're bring, bringing millimeter wave indoors. So for new use cases like enterprise use cases, uh, if you think about a convention center like this, you can have millimeter wave for your laptops, for your tablets, of course for your smartphones as well. Um, but we do see a lot of benefits uh, of millimeter wave in, in an enterprise scenario, for example. Okay. So millimeter waves indoors, that's the new thing. Yeah. That's, that's quite interesting because I feel uh, indoor spaces are more cramped yes. and uh, millimeter waves with the virtue of having a lot of bandwidth and capacity and uh, ping rates that are higher than ever before. I think it works, it makes more sense in indoors. I think uh, with the millimeter wave uh, implementation, is it uh, okay to say that they are street level when it comes to actual coverage area, but uh, the other radios are much higher up, right? Yeah, so it's it's kind of a very interesting question. Um, we've shown a lot of good data and working with you know operators and um, you know part of our, our our friends in, in the industry to see what would it really look like millimeter wave in, in real life. And we've done a lot of simulation. Um, if you think about you know a, a very dense uh, deployment in a city for let's say for outdoor, if you go and co-site millimeter wave base stations with let's say what you already have for LTE, you get really significant coverage. I think for many of the you know big cities, you're getting like 60, 6, 70, 80% of coverage just right off the bat, just by co-siting without further densifying. And of course, if you want to reach like 90, 100% coverage, you just deploy more small cells. Uh, so so that's, that's for outdoor. 
uh, for indoor, for example, we're actually showing a simulation here, um, and and we're looking at Fira, this the the, the venue for Mobile World Congress. Um, we we co-site um, our millimeter wave base station uh, in, in the simulation with existing LTE DAS, and we get a hundred percent coverage. Okay. So if you think of like a lot of people think that hey, millimeter is not doesn't have very good coverage, it has a lot of propagation loss, but the fact that it's actually performing way better than what most people think. That's great. So, I know that uh, Qualcomm has worked specifically on millimeter waves, creating those modules. I've heard about uh, beam tracking, beam forming, and all that. How do you, uh, how do you explain that to a normal person, or sure. do you need to explain that? Sure. Or it, oh, it works all in the background, how, how does it work? Yeah, so if you think about um, how LTE works, or you know the technologies that we have work, um, most of these antennas have, are pretty wide, right? So you get a broad area coverage. With millimeter wave, it's like having a flashlight. It reaches further, it's but with a narrow beam. So as a user walks around the floor or walks around um, in the area, the beam will actually follow you. So that's what beam tracking and, and, and you know, basically you have a more focused energy beam that will help you to extend coverage because you know millimeter it does have the challenge of having shorter distance, but with beam forming, beam tracking, and beam switching, um, you you will get very good good, good experience. Okay. Moving on to the future of 5G. So what's next in plans for Qualcomm beyond 2020 say? Sure. So if you look for, look at the you know standardization process, so release 15 is pretty much complete by now, right? All the deployments are starting. Um, SA has, was done in June of 2018, and then there's some you know enhancements that's currently ongoing. But the the focus for us has already been you know from the technology side is really on release 16, and that is already being underway for a few quite a few months now, and we expect the completion of that spec to be uh, first half 2020. Okay. And we really see release 16 as not only you know enhancing what's already out there uh, for release 15, which is the foundation for 5G and R. Uh, we see it as an expansion of 5G into new industries and new verticals. Uh, and I can talk a little bit about what areas we're really looking at. So, if you if you think about you know what, what what's what's the thing that we you know we um, care most about, right? So, moving around transportation, so automotive, right? Uh, so there is the technology called CV2X, so 5G NR CV2X. Um, that's going to be a part of release 16, where we do see um, you know, that adding a lot of value to autonomous driving, more efficient autonomous driving. Uh, we do have a demo here that, that shows you know, what that means for, for, for driving for the future. Uh, there, there's the area of uh, industrial IoT, so um, going beyond just mobile broadband in release 15, but looking at how do you um, use 5G to connect mission critical machines, so things that require very low latency, very high reliability, and we're showcasing that we can achieve 99.9999, so six nines of reliability through a very low latency, high capacity 5G link. Uh, so those are certainly some very interesting areas. Um, and with 4G, we have already see the expansion into unlicensed spectrum. So yeah. with LAA, okay. now we have gigabit LTE. Yeah. Um, so in, in part, as part of release 16, there's also um, going to be work done on 5G and are operating in unlicensed spectrum. Uh, for both standalone, uh, as in, you know, you did not having an LTE anchor, but also similar type of LAA implementation with a, with a, a licensed anchor. Okay. So release 16, when are we going to see release 16 come into action? So standardization will be done first half, oh, well, first half of 2020, so we'll see commercialization of that technologies in 2021, 2022 timeframe. So we're still a couple years away from now, but there's tons of work to be done and it's very exciting. That's great. So I've been seeing these uh, demos on uh, virtual reality, extent reality, and so on. I know these are also going to take a couple of years, and uh, are there any specific things uh, related to release 16 which are going to cater to those technologies as well? I believe there, yeah, there's a strong interest in what we call XR, so this includes VR and AR, so there are work that's ongoing for, for those use cases uh, in, in release 16. I don't really recall what the specifics are, but it's just certainly one of the key use cases that we do see going forward for, uh, for 5G mobile broadband. So uh, I also saw about, uh, I also read about uh, this edge computing which is going to play a really key role in uh, the 5G scheme of things because I see in XR or in VR, you can stream that uh, high quality content directly to your uh, screen, right. right? And it's also going to help in uh, mobile phones as mm -hmm. well uh, with on-device AI and AI in the cloud. It's yeah. going to become really powerful, right? So 
Well, what what can you uh, tell us about uh, this edge computing? Like, what do you call it? Um, so we, we here we call it the wireless edge. Uh, okay. We see AI and 5G going to complement each other. They're going to work together to bring us better user experiences uh, in many different applications. Um, and and we do think that you know because of the edge cloud, the edge computing, you you are going to have lower latency. And for many of these applications, that's very important. Uh, industrial IoT, for example, you would want you are you know your uh, intelligence to be closer by to your to your robots. You want to have very low latency. Um, for the, the the use case of XR, we are showcasing what we call the boundless XR, where you can actually offload a lot of processing, like heavy lifting, rendering processing from the goggle to the edge cloud that's close by and having 5G as the very high capacity low latency link that brings the rendered information to the to the headset and you still have the last minute you know adjustments things that's done by on device and what you end up with is very good a much better work user experience in terms of visuals in terms of the graphics uh, for the user and eventually you also can get you know much better form factor on, on some of these goggles uh, for VR and XR that's great. So I guess AI and 5G, they are going to be working together really closely. Oh, yeah. So that's what we are going to talk about next in the next interview. Thank you so much, Danny Thank Seng, you. for this interview. Thank and uh, again, congratulations uh, for this uh, 5G launch, yes. if you would like to say something like that. Yeah. The, that's fine, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll catch you in the next interview then. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Thanks again, Danny.